Okie dokie. Well, welcome everyone. We're gonna try something uh, totally different today, because why the hell not? I'm adjusting audio. as I suspected it would but I kind of expected it to crash immediately and not like an hour or two hours into my stream so whatever um okay so this is Cinderella phenomenon I know nothing about it zero I have no idea what the hell this is now um I saw someone mention it on uh TikTok and uh they, they they said it was free on Steam and so I downloaded it forever ago. Um speaking of which I suppose I could plug that really quick. Um I have a TikTok and it's at Jessica Reddy Rose. I don't know if anyone can see that. I have 2,000 followers on there, so go follow me on there and spread the word. I don't know. But this is where I, I heard about this and I, I don't know anything about it. Um, however, I am a big weeaboo. I cannot wait to travel to Japan. I'm so excited. I, I, everything about it. I just am so excited. Um, and I don't have any money to do it yet, but it's, uh, it's on my bucket list. So, um, I watch a lot of anime and I read a lot of manga, a lot of both. And my favorite, um, my favorite genre is like this one. So we're just gonna play it. I believe this is a, an anime dating sim, I believe. Uh, I've never played one before. So I don't, I don't know what to expect. Um, but I imagine that uh, I would I get to control um, this lovely lady down here who looks so sad. Um, <clears throat> so I've never played before. You can see it says continue, but I have empty slots. I have, uh, oh wow, wow. So can you save after you make a de decision? Is that why you have 72 empty save slots? So this is gonna be raw. I'm not gonna save and change my mind and whatever else. We're just gonna go for it. Let's start it up. We recommend viewing the tutorial if this is your first time playing a Ren-P visual novel. Yes, I don't know what that means. Welcome to the tutorial, a quick run through on the shortcuts and functions of Cinderella Phenomenon. Okie dokie, Lucette. To advance through text, click the space bar or enter. Okay. Should you miss a line or two while reading, you can always click the back button. Okay. There is a limited amount of lines you can roll back to when you're using this function. The shortcut for this function is page up. Okay, well, I won't be doing that. I'll be clicking. For the lines you've already seen, you can click the skip button. Okay. The keyboard is, I don't care. For the best experience, you may activate the auto forward mode. It could also be deactivated when you advance the text manually. The text speed and time for the delay may be adjusted through the settings. Okay, I don't think I need to do any of that. <laughs> settings. Yeah, okay, yep, uh-huh, text speed, blah, blah, blah. You can have up to 72 save files in the save menu that can be loaded even while playing the story in case you need to recall the events 
or reconsider your choices. Again, this is going to be raw. I don't know what... That concludes the tutorial. Okay, that was much of a tutorial. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Like the one on my mouse. Do I click or do I let it run? I don't want to mess it up. I click. One was the Crystallum Lucis, protected by the ruler of the fairies. Okay, we have a crystal Crystallum Lucis. The other was the Crystallum Tenebrarum. Tenebrarum. That's a mouthful. Which was watched over by the high leader of the witches. Alright, fairies and witches. Totally normal. The Lucis was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. Oh! The Tenenbrarum. Brarum. By fear, anger, and hatred. Okay, so we got some yin and yang going. The fairies and the witches live in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. Okay, yep, see yin and yang. So we got white with white points and a black background, and now we have a black with black points and a white background. Yin and yang, as I said. They regulated the powers of the crystals in order to maintain balance between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness and no courage without fear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The kingdom was at peace for a time. I don't know how long that time is. Wind? Oh, they're writing. Then one day, a traveling bard decided to write stories, tales of the magic and wonders of the kingdom. Dumb bard. I'm kidding. He named these stories fairy tales. So fairy tales are based off of real life, real history. In fairy tales, the light always emerged victorious, and true love was the usual reward. It's true. The fairy tales spread further than could have been predicted. So everyone was like, damn, these, these stories are good. Get out of here. <clears throat> the humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true and that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. Well, that sucks. The witches became hated. Oh, shite. The witches became hated and feared. Oh, no. See, I told you, stupid bard. He messed everything up. Eventually, they were hunted like animals. That sucks. The witch hunt. The high leader of the witches in all her anger created the fairy tale curse. You think we are wicked? Wicked? So be it. Just as you have taken our happily ever afters, we shall take yours. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the witches used the fairy tale curse to attack humans indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom into chaos and darkness. Whale. <sighs> that sucks. The ruler of the fairies, the Lucis Bearer, sought to regain peace. They're like, alright, let's calm down, everyone. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for humans responsible for the witch genocide. Yeah, I wouldn't, I don't blame them. A terrible war, the Great War, began. Eventually, the Tenebrarum bearer, the high leader of the witches, was finally defeated. Ooh. The Tenenbrarum was lost, peace was restored, and the light once again triumphed. But darkness can never fully disappear. For without li with light, you can't have no darkness. What is light if you have nothing to compare it to? It waits in the shadows, patient for when its time will inevitably return. Contract. Sign here. Lucette. Oh. Do I sign? Oh, I put my name. I'll be named Rose. Because it's my name. Well, it's not my name. But it is a name I have. That makes sense. My, my name's Jessica. But I... That's Rose as well as my middle name. So. Prologue. Ice Princess. My name is Rose Rilla Brighton, Britain, daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III. 
Should I auto this? I am the crown princess of the kingdom of Enjanel. At least, that's who I used to be. But that was before yesterday, when I became the victim of the infamous fairy tale curse. Oh no. Oh, it's pretty. Oh no. I'm so sad. Everyone has forgotten my birthright. Now I am nothing more than a lowly peasant. Oh, shoot. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. Okay, I'm not gonna auto it, and it is a little bit fast. So. They said space advances it, so I'm just gonna sit here and hit space. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. Yeah, if you're cursed that everyone forgets who you are, so people, your own father, you're the king, who doesn't even know that you're his daughter, his prince, the princess? Is that what happened? That sucks. But no. This is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do to break the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. <sighs> I kind of thought there'd be voice acting in this and I'm sad that there's not because now I have to read everything and I'm gonna be so tired. It started out like any other day. Have you heard? Another person was cursed, Maid A says. Oh, look at me. I'm so rich. a pretty princess. I have a rose on my shirt. Look at me! Oh, I'm so pretty. I have like a little, you know, red. And it's a like a looks. It's not a rose. But it looks kind of like a rose. And oh. I'm on my way to the dining hall for breakfast when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. Oh, these are the maids. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. Those, these two are slacking off again. Oh man, they're infamous for slacking off. They should be fired. That's terrible. What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio. Pinocchio? The fairy tale with the lying boy whose nose grows longer? That's awful. You know, the more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think the wicked witches are up to something again? I thought the fairy tale curses would stop after you know who was defeated. <gasps> Voldemort! You two were hired to work, not talk. Made bees like, oh my god! We're sorry, your highness. As can only be expected from the likes of them. I'm kind of mean. Another fairy tale curse. The fairy tale curse started spreading even before the Great War began. I do not have much interest in its effects even now. After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. The victims are weak. Wow, I am a jerk. Angel. An Angel. Sounds like I'm struggling to say angel. Angel. I, I would have called it like Angel L. With an L. G I L E L L E. Angel L. Oh well, Angel will be better off without the dead weight. I am a jerk to the max. Okay. If it were up to Mother, the curse would have been banished from Angel the instant they fell prey to it. Z snap. But mother's not here anymore. She will not come back. Ever. Princess, the king and queen are waiting in the dining hall. Ooh, so he's remarried. After, I'm guessing, her mom passed. I'm on my way. The king, Ophelia, and Rod. What a dumb name. Are all present in the dining hall. Someone is conspicuously missing, but I ignore their absence. King Gennaro. That's my daddy. Good morning, Rose. Hello, daddy. Good morning, your majesty. Ophelia. That's my stepmother, I assume. Good morning, Rose. Ooh, I don't like her. Rose. Ophelia. Mm 
Ophelia Windensov. She's pretty. Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lowly baker. Because she's pretty. She could never be a true queen, for she pales in comparison to mother. So that's why I was cursed. Because I'm a bitch. Ah. I take my seat next to the king. Why should she say the king instead of dad or father? And look at the person sitting opposite me. Oh, hello, sir. Are you one of the gentlemen I'll be dating? You have a rabbit. A, a plaid rabbit on your shoulder. Rod Benedict Windensov, my stepbrother. Ooh, I don't want to date my stepbrother. Is bored and quiet as usual. He's two years my junior. I hate when people say that. And he's the younger of Ophelia's children. He is mute and uses a plush bunny to voice his thoughts. So he's... Ugh. He's honey. From, uh... Ugh. Ugh. Oh my god. I remembered Honey Senpai, but I forgot the name of the damn show. All I could think of is the stupid theme song. Or on High School Host Club. Jesus. Jesus, my brain. I told you guys I was all tired today. He's blonde and has a pet and has a stuffed bunny. There you go. <clears throat> it was apparently given to him by a fairy. Rod. I hate that name. I mean, it's fine if his name's Rob, short for Robert, but Rod sounds dense. <laughs> he minds his own busy business and is easy to deal with. But his older sister, uh-oh, my eyes go to the empty seat beside him. She's probably the most infuriating person I have ever had the displeasure of knowing. Boy, I really don't like this girl. Oh, here she is. I'm so sorry I was late. I was reading and forgot the time. Okay, so far she's fine. And here she is. Boy, my face. I look so upset over here. Look at my furrowed brow. I'm like, ugh. Ugh, this bitch. Ugh. Okay. Emelaine? Emil I'm guessing her name is pronounced Emelaine. Good morning, father, mother. See, she calls him father. And he's not even a real dad. Good morning, Rod. And good morning to you too, Rose. She seems fine so far. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? Yeah, it's fine. Oh, apparently. Emmeline Windensov, Rod's elder sister and my stepsister. She acts as if we're blood and if she too were born a princess. That bitch. <laughs> As if she could be crown princess. Perhaps steal my place. That's what I'm gonna talk like now. Because that's what I that's how I feel my person is. I will never let that happen. Now that everyone is here, let us begin. Butlers glide inside with silver trays to carefully serve us breakfast. Why do you have 17 place settings if there's only four of you at the dinner table? breakfast table whatever you want to call it the dining table why do you have 17 place settings so Emmeline you were reading the fairy tale books that the king bought brought you oh yes there are so many and they're all so wonderful thank you so much father Ooh. if I called him the king and then this this girl was calling him father I would not be okay I just realized that my strap is all freaking fracked. No wonder I feel so... Whatever. Whatever. I'm gonna put it back. It's not on the right hook. Oh well. Whatever. Thank you so much, Father. I'm happy you like them. I love them. It's so strange that the library doesn't have any of them to begin with. 
Well, yeah, you'd get rid of the fairy tale books if they were the cause of a genocide, which then cursed the kingdom. Sounds like we would throw them away, too. That's because Mother hated them. She, ha she had all the books burned. But why? They're such charming stories. Fairy tales mislead humans into believing they can have things they do not deserve. Like you! Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. I mean, and when their wishes do not come true, f uh, come to fruition exactly as they wanted them to, the humans blame the witches for granting them in the first place. What are you implying about witches, Rose? The atmosphere shifts. The air in the room grows heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps, it, perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil in this world. That is true. Perhaps human, humans are the cause of their own downfall. Yes, that's why the curse happened. A human wrote stories that made the witches into bad guys, and humans believed they were true instead of fake, and so they attacked the witches unprovoked because of a story. That sucks. If you have any idea what you're talking about, child, shut up, Dad. Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering in this kingdom. Yeah, in retaliation. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse onto to our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time the witches had free reign over an angel. I was very young then, and mother forbade me to leave the palace, sometimes even my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. Mother kept me away from everyone. I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna see about turning. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, the music just kind of got loud in my ears, so I was afraid it was getting loud in everyone else's ears too, so I was kind of like, eh. Okay, mother kept me away from everyone, and so I cannot bring myself to care. That sucks. How do you know that the cursed are innocent? Our people have been toiling day and night to rebuild the angel after the Great War, okay? Our people are the kingdom's foundation, and I am endlessly grateful for the determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what your mother taught you about... <laughs> Leave a mother out of this. I'm mean. Dear, please. Rose, darling, your father didn't mean to. I don't think I want to... I am not one of your children, Ophelia. I do not need your sympathy. Well, Z snap again. I mean. Hi. Rose, you will show your mother respect. Okay, I don't even call you dad, so why would I call her mom? This is weird. She's not my mother. That is true. I sit down my fork and knife and I stand up. Stab her. Stab her. I'm done. Excuse me. <sighs> my father and I have never got on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since he married the baker. 
<laughs> Doesn't even say Ophelia, just the baker. My father, the king, has been... It has been 17 years, and I have never felt any love from him. Well, maybe if you weren't such a bitch. He treats uh, Emmeline and Rod, who only entered our life one year ago, like his own children. Because they're probably not jerks like you. Like my, uh, I don't like my, I don't, I don't like that my character's a jerk. Better than he has ever treated me. This has been my life ever since mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me when no one else was. If it wasn't for the ancient, the accident during the Great War, she would still be here. A man. Why the sour face so early in the morning, princess? Ah, so close. Yeah, let's back up a little bit. Let me guess. The king, the queen, and princess Emmeline. Or was it all of them? I ignore his question. Fritz. What are you doing here so early? I'm running some errands for my father. Fritz Gerald. It's a Fitzgerald. Just Fritz Gerald. Okay. Leverton. Or Aiden Leverton. Son of the highest knight of the Order of Caldria. I don't know what any of that means. His father, Sir Alcaster, has served the royal family for many years. Sir Alcaster is one of the king's most trusted advisors. I thought he was a... Oh, I see. He is... Fritz is a knight, and his dad's an advisor. Okay. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. His presence is the only company I can tolerate nowadays. You should wait in the throne room then. Thank you. Okay. Princess? Yes? You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I met you. Well, if her mom died and then you met her, I could understand why she wouldn't smile. But she's also really mean, so I also don't care. Why is that of any importance? <laughs> He's like, uh, 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 uh. She's mean. Just leave her to be mean. Still, I hope you... D I do... I do hope to see you smile one day, princess. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. I'll see you at ten. Ten. Don't tell me you've forgotten. What? You're going to town today, remember? I deflate as, I re as the realization dawns upon me. It has been two days since the king issued the order. Now, this is a memory, I'm guessing. Rose, I would like you to accompany Emmeline on one of her town outings. Surely you could send the maids with her instead. I would not have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with the maids. Okay. I want you to make an effort and get along with your sister. <sighs> <sighs> <clears throat> Step sister. I mean, she's not wrong, but she doesn't be so mean about it. She's your sister, and you will treat her and Rod as if they were her own blood. Ooh. Two days from now, you are going to accompany uh, Emmeline outside. And I'm like, what? I'm 17, Dad. You can't control me anymore. Is that what I'm thinking? I don't know. It has been four years since you last left the palace. Well, I wouldn't leave if my mom died. Like, if I'd be afraid that I would die too. I don't know the circumstances yet, but we'll figure it out. Ever since then, you've locked yourself away. You barely leave your room. Hey, I did the same thing when I was a teenager. <sighs> this is exactly what I did when I was a teenager and my parents did the same thing. Angel was in the grip of the war back then, but now the kingdom is safe and back to its former glory. I want you to see how beautiful Angel L really is. Rose, a princess must know her kingdom. Now 
go with Emmeline and she will show you that the town that you have only ever seen through your windows. Ugh, whatever. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? Whatever. Whatever. Whatever, dad. Loser, dad. The last time I left the palace was four years ago when the king took me with him to check on the people after the Great War had ended. I shake my head, removing myself from the memory. I am safe here. Princess, are you alright? Ugh. Apparently I don't like him either. It won't be that bad. The townsfolk are good people. They're good people, Rose. How can you be so sure? He's like, uh, well... Times have changed. People change. That's precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. Boy, I am sour. I'm so salty and sour. <clears throat> Sometimes change is for the better, princess. I think you'll see that today. Do excuse me. I shall see you later. Okay. What, what the hell is this? Is she a doll? One of the dolls on my table? Cause look at all these princess dolls I have here that <gasps> wait a second. This is Cinderella's dress. This is Tiana's dress. Aurora. This must be Belle. Rapunzel. These are real princesses. <gasps> It's so cute! I don't recognize this one. Or the ones I can hardly see in the back, or this one. But I'm pretty sure Aurora's dress had these things on them. It wasn't this, it wasn't a ball gown shaped, but I'm pretty sure it had these uh, little like square pieces. And this is Cinderella's dress for sure. And this one's Tiana's dress for sure. This is Rapunzel for sure. This must be Belle, although it's the shape is wrong and the shade of yellow is wrong. But that's... That's a cool Easter egg. It is cool. They're so pretty. I want dolls like that. Okay. Delora. It looks, it looks chibi, so she's gotta be a doll. Do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? Oh, it's... Oh, I wish you could talk to me, you and the others. All your dolls. My dolls are my only friends. That's sad. They're the only ones I can trust. That's sad. Ew, that doll's creepy. Ew. Okay. Unlike humans, they will never betray me. Okay. And they will never hurt me, and they will always be there for me. I suppose. I suppose. The moment I saw Delora, I knew she was special. She was different, so elegant and realistic, it was almost as if she was breathing. I mean, she just looks chibi. Yeah. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. See, so you liked her and she, her dad gave it, you know, your dad gave it to you and... Okay. <sighs> I only started receiving dolls from him when mother passed away. <sighs> so these are all new dolls. Mother does not believe in birthday celebrations. Okay. But every year at midnight, a letter would appear under my door. So she doesn't believe in... So she... Never let her leave never let her daughter leave the castle or her room. She had all the fairy tale books burned. Her mother um never believed in birthday celebrations. Why did you like your mom so much? She sounds terrible as well. It would contain instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. A child's dream. I had been fascinated by the dolls, which had always held a little greeting card. A card with the words, I loved you, signed by M. The card would tell me that to keep these celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found a way to show me she still cared. In her own way. Okay. Yeah. 
Sure. It's a little weird, but okay. The secret celebrations had stopped as soon as she had disappeared. Ah, yep. Yes. Excuse me, your highness. The king has requested your presence. This better not be another lecture. Oh, if it's if you're 17 and he's your dad, it's a lecture. Tell him I'm on my way. I will see you later, Delora. Oh! Good morning, your highness. Another just man, okay? Sir Mithros. Sir Mithros, the royal advisor. Is this the same... Is this Fritz's dad? Because he looks young. Father trusts him a great deal, just like... Oh, no, yep, Sir Alica Alcaster is Fritz's dad. So, he has two advisors. Um, every day you look more and more like your mother. I sometimes find Sir Mithros talking to Mother's portrait when he thinks no one is looking. He must have admired her a lot, but I cannot bring myself to think highly of him. There's something about him that puts me on edge. His smirk, like he's up to no good, causing trouble in the neighborhood. Are you on your way to see the king? I shall not keep you then. Our, until our next meeting, dear princess. Bye! Your Majesty, Rose, are you ready? You will enjoy this, Rose. I had heard the shop has lovely dolls. This will be good for you. You will get to know your sister better, and you'll be able to interact with and learn about the people of Angel. About our subjects. I will not learn anything I don't already know. She has her nose up in the air. Why do you always believe that the people around you are incapable of good? Because I have seen how quickly people will betray and manipulate each other to get what they want. Mother warned me about human nature. You do not see clearly, Rose. If you would only open your eyes, you would be able to see how good people really are. Well, they can be. But she's not wrong. They're also jerks. I believe I'm already quite capable of seeing the true nature of people. After all... Oh my god. I have seen that there is no good in you. Damn. <laughs> oh. Sassy Malassy. Rose, I... Where were you when I needed you four years ago? Jeez Louise. Where have you been ever since? Jesus. Back then, I'd been overflowing with grief and pain. i just lost mother my entire world. I'd hoped that maybe he would have shown me some love and compassion, even just a hug to let me know someone was there. It had been a childish hope. I had been left alone. I did not see him for months, had barely even heard his voice. You cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone, any, anyone but yourself. This is what you have taught me, your majesty. I know that I've hurt you, but there is nothing I can do to atone for what I did. But please, Ophelia. Oh, but, be, but please, Ophelia and her children are not a part of that. They do not deserve to be hated. In the end, they still matter more to him than I ever did. Rose. Enough. I have already said I will go. Oh, I'm starting to cry. Everyone's waiting outside. I shudder at the thought of leaving the palace after so many years. Rose, it'll be okay. How can you be so sure? Thank you for agreeing to accompany Emmeline. I would not disobey an order from the king. Excuse me. Damn. These are the same exact dolls that I have in my house. What the hell is all it was? Cheapskate. Hello, how can I help? Victoria! Oh, that's not Victoria. What is it? Uh, Vi Viorica? Viorica. Viorica. 
Emmeline! I mean, Princess Emmeline! How good to see you! I trail Emmeline, uh, ignoring her as she embraces her friend. I glance around the small shop. The dolls displayed are nowhere near the quality of the ones in my room. I cannot understand why Emmeline insisted she buy gifts for her friends here. I cannot believe I am outside the palace. There's no need to be so tense, princess. I would never let anything happen to you. Your only job is to relax and enjoy yourself. You ask the impossible of me. Damn. There is no need to be formal, Vioria, v Viorica. I'm still the same as I was. Oh yes, Rod's come as well. It's been a while, Vioria. Viorica. Wait, I thought he said he was mute. Oh wait, he is right. He talks through the rabbits. The rabbit's talking. What? It's good to see you again too, Rod. I'm guessing that's what it is. And I must introduce you to Her Highness, the Crown Prince Rose. And she's like, oh my goodness. The look on Viorica's face as she takes a step back from me is all too familiar. Ear. My apologies for being so rude, Your Highness. Good morning. Ugh. Um. What's happening? Aha! And this is Sir Fitzgerald, Sir Alcaster's son. It's a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Alice! You're Sir Fitzgerald! Wow, she jumped on him pretty quick. You're really as handsome as Emmeline described in her letters. Ugh. I'm sorry. She's blushing a little bit. Please don't mind her, Sir Fitzgerald. Fritzgerald, I forgot. I'm sorry, Emmeline. Right. <laughs> so, um, what brings you all the way here? Oh, I'm here to get some toys. Gifts for some new friends. Toys from here? Are you sure? Of course I am. Oh. I cross my arms. I would prefer we finish this errand as quickly as possible. Oh yes, of course. I'm so sorry, your highness. <laughs> Princess. I can barely breathe in here. It's so, it smells like peasant. I can't breathe. <laughs> I just want to go back to the palace. Okay, a lady. Beautiful lady. Good morning. Oh, everyone's like, oh my goodness. Up to this point, I had always considered mother to be the fairest beauty in the land. The lady that walks in proves me wrong. Her beauty is mesmerizing and clearly without peer. Everyone in the shop is openly staring. Okay. Oh, you're early today, ma'am. I have some important errands to run later today. Are the items ready now? I wonder what this lady's buying from a toy shop. Toys, I guess. Oh, of course, let me fetch them for you. I'll just be one moment, Emmeline. Why is she smiling at me? Here you are, ma'am. She looks mean too <laughs> thank you ah that lady was beautiful right any girl standing next to her becomes hopelessly ugly by comparison that's sad mm. who is she she's due around town some say that she's a fairy a fairy Fairies have saved Angel from the witches four years ago. Everyone considers them to be our saviors. And yet, the fairies are still unable to stop the fairy tale curses from spreading. Okay. Here you go. 
Thank you so much. No, thank you, Viorica. I hope to drop by again soon. Good, I look forward to seeing you again. Sure. I hope to see you again uh, soon as well, Rod. He's like, uh-huh, likewise. Oh, nice. I want to join the beer club. Can I join the beer club? Steely James, let's join the beer club. I'm waiting to hear your response. But we don't like beer. Oh no. But it's a beer club. So we can get different beers all the time and find a beer we like. Right? The chat delay sucks. Okay, fine. Nice. We have joined the beer club. Leaving the palace was a bad idea. While I'm out, I'm in the center of attention. Some townsfolk point... But I'm going to complain the whole time. Complain about joining a beer club. Oh, look at this one over here. Boo! <gasps> Boo! <laughs> Spooky. Pantyhose and gloves. Okay, well. Um, some townsfolk point and stare at me. Most, however, make a point... To, of avoiding me. Well, yeah, because they're afraid if you step on your shoes that you're going to be a bitch because you're so mean. Like, I am the plague. Well, you're mean. <coughs> and you have power. There are some spiteful stares, but thankfully none are nearly as intense as they were four years ago. Great. What did you do four years ago? I'm sure the townsfolk are only surprised to see you again after so many years. Right. Fritz and Rod lag behind us, which leaves only Emmeline walking beside me. I cannot decide which is worse, the staring or her company. Oh, Rose, look, a street performance. It's been so long since I last watched one. Street performance? Is that a guy or a girl? I can't tell. It says boy. <laughs> a little beer mug, it's cute. Good day, everyone. My name is Walt, and I'm here to spread some happiness and magic. Wow, look at that. The boy named Walt snaps his fingers, and colorful flower petals start to rain down from the sky. Isn't that pretty, Rose? Yeah, I'm annoyed by her now, too. And are those the princesses over there? It is an honor to have you in audience or in attendance the two princesses she's not really a princess though i mean technically please accept this humble gift he snaps his fingers and white lilies appear in his hand okay there's a white lily right here too so i guess it's important oh she's blushing oh thank you i'm like yeah i don't care He's like, oh, I didn't impress her. Okay. The boy looks at me as if uh, expecting some kind of reaction. When he gets nothing from me, he sighs and just gives me a wry smile. <laughs> I hope to see you again during my next show. <laughs> well, definitely try. He gracefully bows before moving back into his area to perform more magic tricks for the gathering crowd. There are performers like this all over at Angel. I love them. How come if the great war that happened four years ago was because humans hunted down witches 
in an attempt to eradicate them all, I don't think this boy is very smart in doing magic tricks. Just, just saying. Maybe someday we'll get to see some musicians too. Those are my favorite. I do not intend to leave the palace again. But you don't like it out here? Uh, this is, I hate this so much. I hate this so much. If she, if Rose doesn't want to leave, don't force her. If she doesn't like flowers, don't give her flowers. Like, I hate these kind of people. Like, you don't like it out here? Like, she's not comfortable. I hate it when this happens. I was thinking the same thing. Like, yes, she, this, our character is a bitch. And she probably does need to get out and... I don't know. She needs to be become less bitchy. But jeez Louise, stop forcing her to like things that she doesn't want to like. Like it's I'm all for trying new things, but not forcing new things. I hate it when people ugh. If I don't like pickles stop forcing me to eat pickles in hopes that i'll like it eventually just leave it alone you don't like it out here rod and i grew up here that's fine with you for you but did we don't i don't care i love angel and this is my favorite part of the kingdom okay i wanted to share this with you rose okay I know you didn't really want to come, but you still tagged along because I was ordered to. That means a lot to me, so thank you. I didn't do this for you. I'm only here because the king ordered me to go with you. I just wanted us to be closer, Rose. I would like to, I would like to try to be your friend. Okay, then how about you do the things that Rose likes instead of forcing her to be uncomfortable and to do things that you like? If you want to be her friend, then you do things she likes. That's what it means. Like, if Rose likes to draw, then buy her some drawing things. If she likes those dolls, buy her some dolls. If she likes to sit and listen to birds chirp, then sit and listen to birds chirp. Whatever she's into. Because if she doesn't want to leave the palace, then you force her, and then her dad forces her, all for your gain of wanting to be her friend. That's stupid. Why? Why are people like this? Why? Why are people gotta be so rude and selfish? I do not want or need your friendship. <gasps> No matter how you act around me, we are not, and will never be, sisters. I'd take care to remember that if I were you. Oh no, you made her cry. But I... Rod suddenly grabs my hand, pulling me away from Emmeline. Stop. He's staring daggers at me. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him angry. Rod, don't let me go. Both of you ought to stay away from me. I feel the heavy atmosphere as I turn to look at the people staring at us. Their expressions mirror the looks of disdain I saw years ago. Anger, disgust, hatred. I begin to walk away. Princess, wait. Don't follow me. Princess! He's your guard. He has to. I adjust my cloak, making sure my face is hidden from view. I should have never left the palace. As I walk around, I watch people bumbling down the streets. So carefree. They work so hard for so little reward. They could work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I have. And yet, they're happy. And I... Ooh. At least she knows. I heard Anais lost her job at the palace. It's true. Crown Princess Rose made sure the poor girl was fired. I stop in my tracks at the mention of my name. <gasps> Not again. And 
nice? Was that the name of that one maid that tore Dolores' dress? If so, my decision was to fire her was justified. A palace maid cannot be clumsy. Why would I tolerate poor performance? What did I do that was so wrong? I know that a nice, hardworking, and big-hearted, very good with medicine. Shame she lost her job so quickly. You know how hard the crown princess is to please. My friend at the palace says she doesn't even smile, only goes around with that cold look on her face. That's probably why they call her the Ice Princess. Ooh. Ice Princess. So all the times I hear the servants saying that, I'd always suspected they were talking about me. She's the complete opposite of our Princess Emmeline. Ooh. See, that sucks. Because the people don't like you and they like the runner-up. Ooh. That child's an angel. We all know she should be crown princess. A noise begins to simmer inside me. I cannot stand hearing anymore, so I walk away. Ever since Emmeline entered my life, I'm always being compared to her, and now I've become second best. I am Rose Aurelia Brighton, daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III and crown princess of the kingdom of Angel. I am of royal blood. She is, she is nothing, but she's someone. There you are. Princess, you must come back with me. It's getting too late for you to remain outside. Oh, now she's allowed to go home. Ten minutes later. Princess, are you alright? Are you hurt? I brush him off and turn away. No need to fuss. Let us return to the palace. Okay. I'm home. Leaving the palace was physically and mentally draining. My bed is welcoming and unusually heavy to my unusually heavy body. I turn my head to meet the Laura's gay, glassy gaze from where she sits on my shelf. I left the palace today, Delora. It was the same as all those years ago. Everyone looked at me as I was. What have I ever des done to deserve those looks? You're mean. How can I be so hated? Because you're mean! Ice princess. I wish mother was here. I look at all the smiling faces of my dolls. At least I still have all of you. I yawn and stretch my arms. Good night, Dolora. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Singing, but who? Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I blink my eyes to only to see Dolores sitting right in front of me on my bed. Moonlight spills across her delicate features. How I wonder what you are. Wasn't she on the shelf with all the other dolls when I went to bed? Spooky! De Laura? It's almost time. I pinch my cheeks to make sure I'm not dreaming. Ooh, Dolores is gonna curse you. It hurts. Only 10 minutes before the clock strikes 12. Oh, yep, see, she's a person now. I hope you're ready, princess. What? My doll just turned into a human. How? Well, you live in a, in a world where fairies and witches are real things. That's how. Who are you? You know who I am. I've been watching you since the day your father gave me to you. What is happening? I don't think I've ever been so confused in my life. All the answers will come with time, but right now I'm here to give you something, princess. Oh, yep. Cursed. That's a shoe. Is this Cinderella's very own glass slipper? It is beautiful. Too beautiful. But then a realization begins to dawn upon me. You're a witch. Smart girl. I knew you'd figure it out eventually. Now it's time to say goodbye to your precious crown. What? Uh oh. Sweet dreams, Cinderella. All right, intro done. Hey, wake up, girl. Huh? What? Where am I? Ow, my head. You have some nerve sleeping in front of my shop. Leave before a customer sees you. I was in my room. How am I here? Did you not hear what I said, you filthy child? Jeez Louise. Filthy? 
You would speak to your crown princess in such a manner? If you're the crown princess, then I am the queen. You must have knocked, been knocked on the head quite hard to have such grand delusions. I'm not delusional. I'm Rose Relia Brighton, blood daughter of King Gennaro Brighton III and the crown princess of Angel. Right. The, never, the king never had a daughter with that witch. <gasps> Ooh. Is that what actually happened to her mom? Was she actually a witch? And it was hunted down because of the fairy tales? Ooh, no wonder. Is she referring to mother? Witch? Don't pretend to be stupid, girl. I can only stare at her puzzled. Our good king only has stepchildren, Princess Emmeline and Prince Rod, and you are most definitely neither of them. What? Now get gone before you go spouting your crazy gibberish at my customers and stare, scare them away. With a huff, she leads me to my own rapidly turning thoughts. <gasps> I quickly realize that I am wearing tattered clothes and I do not even have shoes on. No, no, no. This cannot be happening. Something shines against my chest and I reach up to grab it. This is... It all floods back. Delora being a witch. Cinderella's glass slipper. This is not a dream. Delora gave me the fairy tale curse. My hands begin to tremble. I must return to the palace and speak with the king. Let me in. Sorry, girl, but this palace is off limits to uninvited guests. You do not understand. I am the crown princess Rose Relia really Britain. I must speak with my father. As I loathe, I call him that I have to. No one will believe me if I'm addressing him by title. You best leave now, nice and quiet, before we have to force you. If you would only make way for the king. Uh-oh. The gates swing open, and three horses trot out. Soldiers ride to the horses, while the last one has a different, familiar rider. Father, I immediately move to block the path of his horse. The soldiers move to hold me back. Your majesty, what is this? Your majesty, this girl is claiming to be your daughter. Daughter. Both my stepchildren are in the palace right now. What? Even father is a part of this. Father, you must help me. A witch has cursed me. For once in your life, just once, help me. You must believe me. Tell me, where is your family, child? Why are you all alone? He looks at me with pity in his eyes. He's looking at me more kindly as a peasant than he ever did when I was the crown princess and his daughter. I recoil. You must be hungry. Take this. This should feed you and your family for a day or two. The kingdom offers work opportunities for those who need them. Please let your parents know. I do not want your pity, father. Please escort this girl back to her home. Make sure she gets there safely. At once, your majesty. I watch as my father and his two guards ride away on his horses, leaving me to stand in their dust. He left me alone. Again, you said yourself that you were to have the fairy tale curse. How is he supposed to know? Where's your home, girl? There's nowhere left for me to go to. Father has forgotten me. Leave me. Now look here. Our orders were to leave me alone. Suit yourself. Can't say we didn't try. Don't cause any more scenes, little girl. I'm 17 and not a little girl or a child. I watch with bleary eyes as the soldiers return to the palace. How can this be happening? I stare at the small pouch in my hands. I do not know what hurts more. The fact that I've just been unceremoniously paraded away from my home like I am nothing more than a piece of garbage, or the fact that my own father doesn't even recognize me. Oh, look at that girl's hideous dress. Like, she's a peasant. I wouldn't call it a hideous dress. I'd call it rags. That's the point. How difficult it is to be poor. I clutch the pouch closer to my chest as I run to an empty alley. I huddle in the corner, trying to become as small as possible. How are people going to know that she didn't just steal that pouch? If she's that poor and she has some money, like I... Mm, I squeeze my eyes shut, hoping that when I next open them, everything will be back to normal. A dream? No matter what happens, you must not leave the palace. Why? The world is cruel. People will only ever hurt you. But they are always so nice to me. 
That is only because you are the crown princess. They will never think of what they can- They will only ever think of what they can take from you. Yeah, so she's a bitch because of her mom. That's stupid. I'm trying to protect you, my love. That's why you must never leave the palace. Never leave mother. I'm the only one who will ever love you so much. Do you understand? I understand. Chapter 1. The Markin. Ah, and here we are. When I open my eyes, I am still in the streets. I must have fallen asleep, but the nightmare continues. I'm cold in my rags. I hold myself for warmth, filling some of the cold away, but fail. My feet are numb and in pain, cracked in the dirt that I have gathered from walking barefoot around town. Well, there's a frightful sight. Beggar probably thought she could try her luck with the nobility that live around here. Just look at how ragged she is. What are you looking at? At two women who look the, who lack the basic manners of a noble upbringing. Sends girl, do you know who you're talking to? No, and I don't care. <gasps> what nerve! Let's just go. There's no reason to stoop to commoners' level. I will remember you, and once I break this curse, I will make you regret your words. Well, that's why you've been cursed. I'm pretty sure. I become acutely aware of the fact that I have not eaten anything for almost a day, and I've been sitting here thinking on the new mess in my life. But moping around will not break my curse. Crying will not help either. I should find that witch first, but how? I have no idea where she is. Dolora, I swear I will make you regret this to me. When I find you, I... I will find food first. End close. Is this all the king thinks I am worth? Well, it's probably... I mean, all... I don't... He doesn't know you. He doesn't know what. Uh, this is frustrating. Leave, girl. A dirty peasant like you has no place in this restaurant. But why? I can pay. Find another place. You're scaring away my customers. Am I not a customer? Shoo, there's nothing for you here. Here. He just swatted me away like a fly. That nerve. Sensing that this will gain you nowhere, I ball my hands into fists and walk away. I get the same treatment at the next three restaurants I try. I am treated as something less than dirt, like my money has no real value. I am the crown princess. They have no right to turn me away like this. I have been eating stale bread, anything to keep my hunger at bay. The bread barely helps. Where'd she get the bread from? Out of the corner of my eye, there's a small bakery where... There are croissants on display that make my mouth water. Slowly, I begin to make my way over there. Ow. My feet ache with every step. They look and feel even worse than before. If only I had enough coins for a pair of shoes. Oh, there's not even enough money for clothes. I see. But food is more important. If the rags I'm wearing and the pouch of money are all that I have, then I need to prioritize, and I will die before I beg. Two croissants. You'll need to pay, girl. There are no free handouts here. I take a coin from my pouch and hand it to her. There should be more than enough. The shop owner stares at the coin before reluctantly taking it. She hands me two croissants and a paper bag. I will not ask where you got those coins. Are you implying that I stole them? How else would a beggar like you get that amount of coin? I'll be off with you, child. I won't have you scaring away any other customers. Without another word, I start to walk away from the woman. So this is the goodness of the people of Angel. I take a bite out of one croissant, cringing at crying, crin cringing a little at the dryness. There we go. Hey girl, what now? We stuck at the shop. Want to share how you got your coins there? Excuse me? Look at her brushing us off like she's royalty or something. Oh cool, they're going to steal it from her. Let me go. You ain't no better than us. I'll be a good girl and hand her that pouch. The man on my left grabs at my pouch and attempts to yank it from me. I will not let these brutes take anything from me. I elbow the man in the stomach and I aim to kick the other man's shin. I have an opening and I take it. Bah! I pull myself free and begin to run as fast as I can. Hey! Where do I go? I am not familiar with the streets at all. It's highly likely I'm just going to hit a dead end. Where should I go? Ooh. Uh, let's go left. First choice, left. I cannot let the pain in my feet or my exhaustion stop me. If I stop now, they will definitely catch me. And taking my coins not be the worst thing that they do. That is true. A dead end. Oh, shoot. 
Left was wrong. Left was wrong. Now we're left to run now, girl. What do I do? Oh, who are you, gentlemen? This is definitely not how to treat a lady. Huh? Who's there? Help me! I'm under attack! A shadow looms above us. Before I can blink, a person has jumped down in front of me. His body acts as a barrier between the two men and me. Thank you. Oh. Wait. Is this the beautiful lady from before? This kind of looks like the beautiful lady from the shop. Red hair, green eyes, and a flower. Who are you? Oh, me? Just a passing gentleman concerned about a damsel in distress. He turns to the men, his expression calm, his eyes flashing dangerously. Now shall I treat you, teach you gentlemen a lesson? He's got a sword! Run! <sighs> what? Come back here, you coward. The two of us can take him. I think your friend has the right idea. I'm not the type to show mercy. Ooh. This is way too much trouble for a little gold. This looks like the lady from the shop. I'm not kidding. Are oh, you all right, my lady? You found her. Oh, hello. The boy from yesterday? A little slow, aren't you, kid? Don't call me that. We used to know each other. I don't even know what's going on anymore. I feel ill. My head's pounding and my feet feel simultaneously like they are frozen and on fire. My stomach rumble, the hum hunger coming back with vengeance. My body feels light. Princess! Princess! <gasps> they know I'm a princess! Oh, they know! Lady Parfait <laughs> will be able to help her. Oh, maybe, maybe Lady Parfait is the, is actually, is the, the pretty lady from the shop that really is, um, a, uh, a fairy like, uh, they were talking about. Remember how, uh, V, Vior, Viorica, and, uh, um. Uh, em Emmeline, we're talking about that? You're right, we need to move now before anyone else sees us. Yeah. <gasps> oh, look, I've made the right choice. The crystal on the upper right corner indicates that I have made the right choice for a particular love interest. Love interest. Ooh. Each color corresponds to a certain love interest. They also appear belatedly after you make the choice, so keep your eyes and ears open. Okay, so it won't tell me if I made the right choice until after the choice. Belatedly after I make a choice. Okay, so going left, was the right choice for a red love interest. Probably this dude right in front of us. Okay. Hang in there, princess. What? Everything is fading. I'm dying! Help! A dream? What's that in your hand, Rose? I... It was hurt. I just wanted to help it, but it died. Oh no. I'm holding a dead bird. Diseases. It's all my fault. It's not your fault, my love. It died because it was weak. Jeez, her mom is... F but this is the world, Rose. Only the strong survive. The weak get cast aside to die. <laughs> oh, my. You are not weak. You are strong. My crown princess, and you do not cry. Now wipe your tears. I don't want to see you cry again, you understand? Yes! Now get rid of that thing. And wash your hands. <laughs> Did you not hear me, child? Oh, Jesus. This lady is crazy. Yes, mother. Oh, you're awake! I'm gonna take a quick break. Quick break. Quick, quick break.
man. I'm gonna need some tea after today. Oh. Oof. Oh, my neck is hurting. Hold on. Quick break. Okay, I'm awake. Where am I? Uh, well, uh, this isn't my room. My hand flies to my chest, but the little glass slipper hangs from my neck. Yep, still here. Are you okay, miss? This girl is the maid that tore Dolores' dress. The one I fired for her clumsiness. Well, Dolora is a bit, so it's a good thing her dress was uh, ripped. This person's a savior. Miss? To think I would meet her again. Uh, here. Uh, to think that I would meet her again here, like this. Um, leave me alone. Right, of course. Um, here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Some salmon salve, salmon salve, whatever it's. That brain. I don't know. Now what? Haven't thought at all, have you, Ice Princess? Oh, Delora. Hi. Hey, welcome back. You. Suddenly, there she is, Delora herself, before me, with a snide smile, looking happy with herself. She's the cause of everything I've been through. All the pain, heartache, and hunger. It's her fault. I try to stand, thinking to give the witch a piece of my mind, but as soon as my feet touch the floor, pain shoots up my legs. I end up falling back to the bed. Ow. Wow. She didn't wear shoes. For one day, where she spent most of the day sitting in an alleyway. And her feet are hurt that bad. She really is a princess. Because uh, it doesn't hurt that bad to wear... Ugh, whatever. To not wear shoes. You should be more grateful to the girl you just scared away. She's been taking care of you the past two days. Two days? I've been passed out for two days? I'm su suddenly vibrating with anger. Remove the curse. Now. Ha! Do you think it just command me to remove the curse in your best princess voice? What do you want? Gold? What I want is worth more than all the gold that you could summon in Angel, princess. Besides, haven't you read your fairy tales? The caster cannot take the curse back. You need to focus on breaking the curse yourself if you want your life back. Mother burned the books before I could read more than one or two of them. I do not think either involved curses just genies and trading away your voice for legs so aladdin and little mermaid ah it's a good thing you're awake princess parfait oh this is not okay you should should you really be up and about don't fuss i'm feeling much better are you a witch as well oh no my name is parfait and i'm a fairy a witch and a fairy in one room? Being friendly with one another? Impossible. Oh, look at her face. You weren't expecting that at all, were you, princess? What's going on? I'm sure you've many questions, princess. Obviously, I just ask one. What's going on? How do you know I'm the princess? Don't be silly. She's a fairy. Of course she knows. I promise. We'll do our best to answer your questions. I don't even know where to start. What would you like to know? Why was I cursed? Seriously, you're really gonna ask that? I wouldn't have asked if I knew the answer. If I know wh why I'm cursed, I can work towards breaking that curse. You have such a temper on you. Very well, this one has, this one's got a simple answer. It's because you're cold-hearted, cruel, wicked princess who deserves to be punished. Dolores. 
A curse is the only way to force you to change your horrid ways. Dolora, you could have put it more nicely. I'm pretty sure I was already being nice. Change? Why do I need to change? I mean, yeah, you are a, a bee. Are you completely unaware of how heartless you are to other people? The coldness you show your stepfamily and your father. The way you treat Princess Emmeline. Why would I need to treat... Why would they need to be treated any differently? You need to prove that you have some goodness in you, princess. Some smidge of kindness. Why? People only show you kindness when they want something from you. The instant they get what they want, they'll just throw you away. What else would you like to know? Uh, these are irrelevant. What happens if I don't break the curse? Uh, I stay a peasant forever. Why are you two working together? Because I'm a cold-hearted be-it who needs to be fixed. So I guess, how do I break it? Excuse me. The necklace you've got is one of Cinderella's glass slippers. To break the curse, you must get the second slipper. Complete the pair. And how do I do that? By doing three good deeds. Well, that's easy. What? It's a very easy thing to do. That's what I just said. At least for someone who knows how to be good. Three good deeds. What does that even mean? It means if like an old lady is struggling to carry her groceries home, you help her take it home. I could do three good deeds in 30 seconds. I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> Yikes. Collar pull. Take heart, princess. Goodness is innate in everyone. Are you sure that's the case with this one? Dolora, you're not helping. I'm a witch, and I think I have more goodness in my big toe than she has in her entire body. Now you're just being mean. For every good deed you accomplish, you will get a piece of the glass slipper. When you've gotten all three, you will complete the pair, and the curse will break. Simple. I just suggest you start by polishing the attitude of yours. What else would you like to know? It doesn't matter. Why are you two working together? To answer that, we'll have to give you a bit of history lesson. Oh, I've got this. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. Dramatics aside, there's only one crystal in the kingdom called the Crystalline Lucis. It's powered by happiness and love, and the other one is powered by fear and anger. The strongest of the witches... Yep, uh-huh, uh-huh. The strong... uh-huh. Uh-huh. Parfait is a Lucius bearer. Oh. I take in Parfait's fair and sickly appearance. She's the strongest fairy. The great war greatly damaged me. My powers are only a fraction of what they used to be. And with no child, I have no successor to my burden. What does a bearer do? The bearers regulate the energy of the crystals and keep the balance between darkness and light. For centuries, the fairies and witches lived in harmony with humans of the kingdom until a certain human decided to be a pest. Who was he? I knew him as Hans Gabriel Grimm. Hey, the Grimm fairy tales. He wrote the fairy tales. I like the Grimm. Yeah. They're not, they're not happy though, and they don't put witches as evil and and good prevails, and it's not. Mm -mm. And he started a feud between the witches and the fairies in the process. How could a single person have so much power? It was the power of his words, the grim stories, the witches were always evil. The humans naturally grew to fear and hate them. They began to hunt them. Didn't the witches fight back? We aren't allowed to use our powers to cause harm. But that all changed when the Tenenbaum bearer decided revenge was more important than our promise. The witches took over the kingdom. They created the fairy tale curse to spread even more sadness and anger, to fill the human heart with negative emotions. All the fuel, the power, all to fuel the power of the, the tannin bomb. The delicate balance of harmony between the crystals was broken. The witches and the crystal grew far stronger than they were ever meant to be. We have no choice but to fight. And then the great war happened. 
Um, the bear was defeated. The Great War was ended with the help of an unexpected ally, but many lives were lost. The good witches suffered horribly. Let me guess. The Tenenbrarum bear that was defeated was main character's mom, the, the queen. That's my guess. The good witches suffered horribly. We still have to stay hidden in hopes to have any kind of peace. Are you trying to make me believe that there are good witches? The Tenenbrarum can poison the heart and mind into darkness and cruelty. The witches put themselves at risk in working with the Tenenbrarum. It's main in maintaining harmony. It's inevitably some inevitably are corrupted. Many good witches are corrupted, were corrupted during the war, but most remain that way. Many do not believe it, but witches can be just as kind as fairies. And yet, it wasn't a fairy that cursed me. I've done good by cursing you, princess. You can thank me when you've broken it. Dolora was not corrupted by the Tenenbrum. She is as good as they come. Hopefully, you'll come to see that for yourself. I doubt it. Oh, I need to go turn off the air conditioner because I'm cold. That's the other thing I forgot to do. drinking me. Apart from my own inherent goodness, Parfait and I are working together because we have a common goal, which is to restore the balance between darkness and light. What else would you like to know? I could learn everything. I thought I would be able to learn everything. I think you know the answer to that one already, princess. I do. That's why I didn't ask it. Three good deeds and I get my life back. Easier said than done. No, it's not. It's so easy. You said Cinderella, didn't you? Didn't you go to a ball and find a prince? What does doing good have to do with that? Going to a ball, finding a prince. It's all so old-fashioned. No fun in that. Cinderella is a girl with a pure heart. She's always willing to help others, even when they're cruel to her. Anyway, I have brought some clothes for you. I'll leave them on the table. We're waiting outside. And there are some people I'd like you to meet. I cannot believe this. I looked down at my neatly bandaged feet. I have to admit that while sore, they are nowhere near as painful as they had been two days before. Here's some salve I made for you. It'll help with the pain. Why, why would she even care? I was the reason she lost her job at the palace. Oh, she probably doesn't remember me. I'm the princess. But still, she has no reason to do such things for me. I ignore the south for the time being and gingerly stand up, testing my feet for pain. The injury is definitely healing. I slowly walk over the table and change the clothes that have been left for me. The dress is nowhere near as luxurious as the ones I wear at the palace, but is still far improved from my rags. All my life, I've never had to lift a finger, and now I'll not let them see how much they've rattled me. I refuse to break. Just watch me. I will free myself from this curse. All you have to do is be nice three times. <laughs> what is this place? It looks awesome. There are several people in the room chatting amiably with each other. I notice a, the girl that had left the salve by the counter serving drinks. But as soon as the people in the room notice me, the room falls into immediate silence. Well, look at what we have here. The Ice Princess herself. Huh? They know who I am. I didn't think it was true. Cursed for her cold-heartedness, as to be expected. You remember who I am, and yet you still treat me like this. Well, you aren't really a princess anymore, are you? You're one of us now, girl. 
Everyone, please, you shouldn't be treating a newcomer like this. Princess, let me apologize. They mean no offense. I cannot believe that. When people... Not when the people parfait is referring to simply smirk and shrug as I meet their gazes. Yeah, I mean, they're mean to you because you were mean first. That's how it works. People very rarely are mean without reason. And when they are, they're called Karen. So, yeah. I'm always move on. What is this place? Welcome to the Marchin Tavern. A home for those with the fairy tale curse. You make it sound like some kind of holiday house. Don't ruin my moment, Delora. Marchin Tavern. The Marchin was built three years ago when the number of cursed in Angel continued to rise. The goal was to gather those affected so they might help each other into breaking their curse. Of course, I am also here to provide help as necessary. Only the cursed and those allied with our cause can stay here. The evil and the wicked can never find this place. Most of the people here are cursed. How come these people remember who I am? The curse, cursed are not affected by the conditions of someone else's curse. Makes sense. Your condition is simple. Everyone has forgotten that you are the crown princess. But because these people here are also cursed, they still remember your title. It goes without saying that fairies and witches are also not affected. Come, princess, let me introduce you to the few boarders we have at the Marchin. Parfait beckons the server girl over. Hello, this is Anais, or I'm going to call her Anise. She helps out in the Marchin and does most of the cooking. I'm sure you understand why she's working here now. I believe she deserves an apology. Miss Delora, what are you talking about? Don't you worry your sweet little head over it. You don't remember what the Ice Princess did to you. Huh? I have nothing to apologize for. <gasps> You're not doing your one good deed. You could have a one piece right now. Clumsiness does not befit a palace maid. I only did what was necessary. Well, it's nice to meet you, Princess. I'm Anise Willowy. I hope you get along. Okay. Um, really? This is how you're going to start doing good? I don't believe I asked for your opinion. Please, you two, no fighting. Whatever. I hold my tongue as Parfait leads me to two people whose faces are incredibly familiar. I, they're not familiar to me at all. They are faces I've seen in the palace before. This is Jurian Valente and Garland Belrot. How did you know? Both of you were in the Order of Caldria. That's right. They were two of Sir Alcaster's best knights. It was a big surprise when they both left a year ago. Okay. I only found out recently it was because they acted against Sir Alcaster's orders. They were stripped of their titles and dishonorably discharged from the service. What are you two doing here? We help the fairies. They and Anise are exceptions and are allowed in this tavern without the curse. Jurian and Garland lend us their strength to help protect the Marchin. Protect? From the witches. They do anything to make sure the curses remain unbroken. And what about you? I'm an exception. Also, I'm good. You keep forgetting the good part. Remember, not all witches are evil. Your curse is a test. Test. Originally, the wicked were cursed so they could learn to change. Their curses were meant to teach them a lesson. I'm hoping your curse will teach you a lesson too, Ice Princess. I really am only trying to help you. I don't need you to show me how to change. I just want my life back. Well, to do that, you have to break a curse. Ugh. Oh my god, I have to be nice three times? Oh my god, it's the worst ever. <laughs> Try and make some friends, princess. They might be able to help you break your curse. Oh, I 
would love to hang around and watch the princess try to be friendly. We have work to do, Delora. Let's go. Fine. Try not to make any more enemies, princess. The instant Parfait and Delora decide to leave the room, the temperature drops several degrees. Jeez. Uh... How do I save? Perfect. I haven't saved this whole time. Excellent. Now that I'm alone, I feel the cold stares return. Disgust. Contempt. As if I'm the reason they are cursed but have to take refuge in the marching in the first place. Make friends. All I ever had are my dolls. I've never needed friends. I'll break this curse on my own. I was told it was rude to stare. One man suddenly stands up, the anger apparent on his face. His hands clench and unclench into fists as he glares at me pointedly. Julian and Garland place themselves in front of me, shielding me from the man. Ooh. You know the rules. What happens in the past stays in the past, and no one's allowed to harm anyone in the marching. If you cannot comply, you are no longer welcome here. <laughs> no matter, the Ice Princess will get what's coming to her. He throws one last glare my way before sitting down again. Boy, he wanted to beat me up. Break the rules and you'll get what's coming to you. That goes for anyone here. Everyone here. Jurian's cold tone is firm, and there's no doubt that she... M oh, she's Jurian. And there's no doubt that she means what she says. So these are the great knights of the order. These are the great knights of the order of Caldria. The margin begins to settle down, and everyone eventually goes back to their conversations and meals. I walk toward an empty table, realizing I'm only, I am being deliberately ignored. I become immersed in my own thoughts as I sit down. One thought, however, comes to me immediately. They hate me. They hate me somehow, and I've only ever left the palace twice in my life. How did this happen? That is true. If she's never if she's only ever left the palace twice in her life, then how would they know how what did she do to cause everyone to actually hate her? I was hearing some sounds, and I was in my home alone, so I was like, uh, what? It's, I think, just my cats. I went out there, they both left and came towards me. Like, they were like, whoop. Okay. The only people who treated me with any respect were Anise, Jurin, Jurian, and Garlin. Okay. Is it because they cannot remember who I am? Maybe being in the marching isn't such a good idea. I doubt anyone here wants to help me break my curse. They'd probably rather see me suffer under its weight. Eh, probably. Three good deeds. How am I even supposed to com complete three when I do not even know if, if I can accomplish one? Hey! It's the man. May I join you? I look up and stare in shock at the beautiful lady from the toy shop. Her beauty still manages to take my breath away. What is she doing here? You. You were in the toy shop. Ah, yes. I was there picking up some items for a friend. I am humbled you still remember me. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Miss Karma. Wow. Sparkly. Your name is Karma? A suitable name for someone as beautiful as me, no? Eh... Uh, Karma, your narcissism is going to scare the princess away. 
Oh no, I was thinking the, the the guy with the red hair that looked the lady was the best looking one so far. There's a lady. Oh. Oh, you are the magician boy. Boy. Oh how appropriate, boy. Call me that one one more time, and I'll ruin that pretty face of yours. <sighs> you would hit a lady. How savage. Anyway. I'm Waltz Cresswell, and I have the Neverland Curse. Oh, uh, so he's a boy because of Peter Pan. He's actually a man, but he's stuck as a boy. What about you, princess? What's your fairy tale curse? Does everyone share in what their curse is? We talk about it freely in the Marchin. The whole point is helping each other break their curses, after all. Hard to do that if we keep our fairy tales quiet. He pauses and then narrows his eyes slightly. Well, some people keep their fairy tales a secret. He eyes Karma briefly, cocking an eyebrow. So, what fairy tale has a cross-dresser? Or maybe a woman during the day and a man at night? Beauty and the Beast? I don't know. The smile never leaves Karma's face. Has anyone managed to break their curse? I have been told that a few have. A few. That's not very very reassuring. Well, at least the curses can be broken. I cannot particularly say that reassures me either. What ails you, darling? Is it your curse? You can talk to us about it. Tell us what it is. Cinderella. Oh, goodness, Cinderella. That explains the nature of your curse. Only it's been reversed, hasn't it? Riches to rags. That's one way of putting it. Karma, you're not helping. You really are better off ignoring him, princess. Him? He only speaks of nonsense. He? Quinn, what are you crying about? What? What is it, baby? What are you doing? What are you doing crying? Oh, he ran so fast. My cat was crying, and I put my hand down. He sprinted over for pet. <laughs> so big. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh yeah, see, it's not so bad. It's not so bad. I need to figure out why karma is a man woman. Can I figure it out? Can I figure it out? No, uh, 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 not my desk. Good boy. All right, princess. Oh wait, I won't figure out why he's a man, woman. Damn it. Parfait's voice takes me by surprise. I haven't even noticed her entering the room again. May I speak with you? Sure. Oh, should we go to a upstairs room? I'd like you to meet someone, though I'm sure you already know him quite well. Oh, Rod! Can you not? Nope, not under my desk. 
Rod. So you really are cursed. I was the only one that gave Sebi... I was the one that gave Sebi to Rod. So that he still had some way to voice his opinions. This cat is ridiculous. He wants more pets and he's trying to get to my hands. Sebi. Short for short for Sebastian, isn't it? Now don't you dare go on the land. I got this. Don't you climb on my desk. Short for Sebastian. Cute, isn't it? It's nice to nice to get the fuck down. What the hell are you doing? Cat's being bad. It's nice to meet you, princess. Oh, the rabbit's actually talking. Sebi's voice changes when it greets me. Get out from underneath my desk! Get, 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 get! Hey! What the hell, man? I'm gonna scratch my, my chair! He has claws and everything down the back of my chair. Well, piestered? Sibby's voice changes when it greets me. The tone it uses is lower whenever it speaks for Rod. Perhaps that is what Rod's voice actually sounds like? Wait, if he remembers me, does that mean the mermaid's curse? Ah, yes. No voice. And Sebastian. What? That is my curse. Rod's been mute all this time because he is cursed. Does everyone else know? Obviously, they are my family. Even the king? He knows as well. So I'm the only one you never told. I didn't think you'd particularly care either way. That's true. He's not wrong. <laughs> Yet I cannot believe I did not know. I was left out once again. What are you doing here? You were left out because you just said yourself that you didn't care to know. So why would they tell you if you don't care? But you do care. <sighs> I have been trying to help Rod with his curse. That's why he comes to the marching from time to time. But I don't even want... Anyway, I only came here to confirm that you are truly cursed. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. It was a big surprise when I woke up one day and you weren't in the palace. And even, even a bigger surprise when I found out no one remembered you. It's been days since I was cursed. I wonder, how are things in the palace? Livelier. Happier. Happier. I've never seen my family happier than they are now. I say it's a good thing you're not a princess anymore. Well, he's not wrong. I'd always thought that Rod didn't really care about me regardless, but is this the truth? But is this the truth? This is how you truly feel? So I have to be cursed for you to open up about how you truly feel? The only reason I didn't say anything earlier was because Emmeline didn't want me to. I'm happier too, now that you're gone, I don't have to pretend to like you anymore. I'm going to return to the palace now. Uh, I'm gone and they're all happier. Your very existence has been erased from the palace. They've never known you. That doesn't mean they're happy without you. Even the king. What did I expect? Why did you bring me here? Bring me here to the people of the Marchin. They, I, I shouldn't have left you alone in there. I'm sorry. You knew how they felt about me. What have I ever done to them? Now isn't the right time to explain. When will it ever be the right time? So many things have already happened to you. I need you to be patient, Rose. Has the prince already left? Yes, yes, he has. Princess, we'll talk about this later. For now, you must focus on breaking your curse. Did I miss something? No. Mm, 
All right. Maybe the fairy is right. I don't think I'm ready to find out how I made so many people hate me. Well, Parfait, I think it's time that we get down to business. Let's get down to business. Is that a curse? What should we do with her? What are you talking about now? You, of course. You've got nowhere to go, right? She is right. I think back to the days I spent on the streets and shiver. Think back to the days I spent on the street. It was one day. It wasn't even 24 hours. I will do anything so long as I don't have to go back there. The princess can stay at the march and with me and the rest of my boarders. I had almost forgotten what hope felt like. But you'll have to work in exchange for a room. I celebrated too soon. Oh no, poor baby has to work. What? Magic has its limitations, just like anything else. Money doesn't appear out of thin air, not even for a fairy. The marching doesn't attract many customers since it's only the cursed and few others that can enter. I sell my potions here and there, but I have, but I have several hungry mouths to feed and my funds are tight. I thought fairies lived in luxury. Parfait, are you broke? Ouch, even the ice princess can tell. And yet you still take people in. That's how it's always, that's, that's always how Parfait operates. She's good natured to a fault. I'm told suffoc I'm told suffocating beneath my debt will be what kills me. Why don't you just leave? I assume you make enough to take care of yourself. Leave someone who's in need and help? I could never. And that princess is how goodness works. How goodness works. It's not as if I accept freeloaders. All my boarders help me run the march and, and do errands. Princess has never worked a day in her life. A doll should be useful. If karma can be useful, anyone can. Burn. I have yet to see karma, but be anything but useless. Princess, you're more than welcome to stay if you're willing to help out. It's the latest you it's the least you can do in exchange for a roof over your head and three meals a day. Oh, and shoes. Do I even have a choice? No. I toss and turn in bed, unable to fall asleep. It's probably because your lights are on. I like it's, it's funny how they have flame lit candles here, but then like a modern looking lamp there. <laughs> Not even an oil lamp, it's just a modern looking lamp. The mattress is hard and the sheets are itchy. Nothing like the bed I had in the palace. What I would give for my own bed again, for any of the comforts of home. What you would give is three good deeds. I miss my dolls. Lady Parfait. Lady Parfait. I sit up immediately. What's going on? I leave my room to investigate. Investigate. Some of the other march and boarders, Walt, Jurian, and Garland, are sitting on the settee. Settee? Looking anxious. What's happening? Sorry to be wake you. No, but the noises Garland was, were... No, but the noises Garland was making would have woken the dead. Drina and I found an injured man when we were out doing our rounds, and we brought him here. An injured man? Wait, what are you doing outside? It's almost in the morning. Nothing you need to worry about. Lady Parfait and Anise are tending to the man now. These people, will they just help anyone they find out on the streets? What if this man is dangerous? Do you think the witches got to him? It's possible. You have to find out it- find- we'll have to find out when he wakes up. Is it Fritz? The next day, Parfait reveals the man had only suffered minor head injuries. She says that she expects him to wake soon. I look at the tray of food in my hands. Anise has asked me to bring up the stranger's bring it up to the stranger's room while she's finishing doing the rest of her cooking. I would never I never I would never have been to ask to do this in the first place. Goodness, what what's that poor tray done to deserve that look? I must say that it's odd to see the princess doing something nice for someone. What do you want? I have something to ask the man who was brought in last night. Seeing as how I am... I'm gonna have to wrap up soon. I can't read anymore. Seeing as you're being good enough to deliver breakfast, I thought I'd just tag along with you. <sighs> if you're going, just bring this tray up yourself. 
You are not in any position to delegate your duties to me, Miss Rose. Come on. Our guest must be famished. Seeing no way out, I followed Dolores to the spare room the man had been put in. Come in. It's my room. Oh, it's someone new. I thought the man would have been old, but to my surprise, he looks young, probably in his early 20s. He seems lost in reverie as he stares at a small notebook. Good morning, good to see you're awake and breathing. The man looks up at her when he speaks. The instant he sees us, his eyes widen. Why is he staring at us, us, at us like that? Am I dead? What? I'm in heaven, or maybe... You two are angels that have fallen out of it. Ugh. I see. What can a humble gentleman like myself do for you lovely ladies? Uh, you could join me on this bed. It's very comfortable and there's plenty of room for both of you. Absolutely not. I'll throw your lead on this one, princess. Princess? Ah, of course, the beautiful lady could only be a princess. Look at the noble way you hold the tray. Uh, I'm not gonna throw it at him. Your wish is my command and my fate, my sweet princess. If you want, you can have him. I'll pass, thanks. Oh, he's awake. Another lovely lady has entered my chambers. <laughs> I don't think my heart could handle the perfection of the three of you at once. Oh my god. This guy's my least favorite. I hate him. I think I know how Cass and over here got those head injuries. Somebody decided she's had enough of his rubbish and wants to punish him. Delora, patience. He may not even be the right state of mind right now. He did take head injuries to the head, after all. The man finally stops and just looks at me. His eyes narrow and he stares so hard, I almost want to slap him. What? You're familiar. But no, it's impossible. Aren't you the crown princess? What are you doing here? If he knows and he's... Well, he's definitely not a witch or a fairy. It can only mean one thing. If he recognizes the ice princess. What's your name, good sir? I would answer any questions you ask of me, madam, but the man looks on his notebook in hand. I don't remember. What fairy tale had someone who forgets? I don't remember. Okay. Amnesia? The Dark Descent? Or Amnesia the Amazing Anime? I know everything about Angel, and yet I don't know the first thing about myself, except that I have the Rumpelstiltskin curse. I don't remember much about Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin? Is that a fairy tale? I knew it. He's got a fairy tale curse. Fairy tale curse? You remember how to break it? From what I remember, I need to somehow collect three memories and then get them to appear in this journal as entries. Interesting. He shows us the notebook he's been holding on to since we entered the room. My first memory is of waking up and holding this. I thought there would be information here, but it's empty. Another victim of the curse. You must be tired. Rose will leave your breakfast here and will give you some time to yourself. We'll be outside if you need anything else. Yeah, here's your tray of food. Rumpelstiltskin. What's that fairy tale about? Delora does a good... Does does not do a good job of hiding her laugh. She snorts and cro and I cross my arms, embarrassed. Mother burned the fairy tales in the palace before I got a chance to read all of them. Fine, fine, I'll keep it short. Once upon a time, there was a girl that was said to be able to spin straw into gold. The king found her and locked her up in a towel. Tower. She said he wouldn't let her go until she turned all the straw in the room into gold. But the girl was just a regular human girl. She knew she'd never be able to turn the straw into gold and feared that she would be locked up forever. That was when an odd little man appeared before her and offered to do the job for her if she gave him something in return. The girl gave him her necklace and the man spent the rest of the night spinning the straw into gold. However, the girl wasn't released. The second night she was given more straw to spin and the little man appeared once more. This time she gave him her ring. 
third night, the king... This is the short version? On the third night, the king ordered her to spin the straw one last time. If she did, she would be released and made his queen. That would, it's not really being released. However, that night, the little girl had nothing left to give the little man, so they made an agreement. He would spin the straw into gold for her as long as she gave him her first child. I personally never understood why the girl would want to marry the king in the first place. Yeah, parfait, that's what I say. Hush, I'm trying to tell a story here. Years passed, and the queen finally gave birth to her first child. That night, the old little man returned and demanded his due, but the queen didn't want to give up her child. The man then said that he would take her child. They wouldn't take the child if the queen was able to guess his name correctly in three days. The man's name was Rumpelstiltskin. Did she guess it? Oh yeah, the night b before her time was officially up, the queen was drawn into the forest by the sound of a little voice. She saw the little man celebrating his upcoming victory, singing about how nobody had or ever would guess his real name, which was Rumpelstiltskin. He does not sound particularly smart. So agrees the general populace. Sometimes I wonder how Hans would was able to come up with such tall tales. Well, the margin is opening soon. I can expect another busy day. Especially busy for you, Rose. You start coming up with good deeds. So we need to make sh we need to guess his name then, I guess. The amnesiac Casanova was allowed to stay in the marching with other boarders because he still didn't seem capable. Parfait, because he still seemed capable, Parfait seemed to work as one of the marching servers. And these protests that he remained in bed fell on deaf ears. Parfait couldn't very well throw him out, not while knowing he had nowhere to go. I would be incapable of showing him such kindness given all the nonsense he spouts at us. The people that frequent the marching began to steadily ignore me altogether, like I do not exist. It's better than the stares and the hateful looks. Rumple, you aren't here to flirt. They named him Rumple. But this lovely lady is unattended. Sir Rumple, please, you're making me blush. She likes it. Because the man couldn't remember his name, he fashioned one from his own curse. Rumple, I think it suits him. Because he's rumply, wrinkly, I don't know. I will never understand Parfait. This amorous waste of space is about as useful as karma. I've returned! I need to learn more about you, karma. Speak of the devil. Did you miss me? Karma had left abruptly yesterday saying that she had something very important to take care of. Waltz trails in after her now, carrying several boxes in arms. Why am I carrying these? Because you made me run the last errand for you at the toy shop the other day. And because gentlemen carry things for ladies. I'm going to drop them now. Those boxes contain very important contests. Welcome home, Miss Karma. Nice to meet you. You survived the trip, Waltz. Thank you, Anise. So this is our new housemate. We have not had the opportunity to meet. I am... We are all surprised when Rumple suddenly reaches out to grab Karma's hand. My life for this moment has been a depressing monochrome. Now that you have entered my bleak existence, I see everything in beautiful, blazing color. And nothing shines more brightly, more vividly than you. I'm Rumple, my sweet. Let us talk of marriage. I stare at Karma, waiting for her to flirt back. At the very least, I expect her to wave Rumple away for being a fool, but she remains eerily silent. Answer, my angel, I beg of you. Ooh. Keep. Say the word, and it's done. Your filthy hands off me. Ew. Not again. I would never be interested in the likes of you. Go on, lad. Give me, give him a good beating, like the one you gave me. My queen, there is no need for violence. What did you call me? Please come down, Rumple. It's still recovering. What's going on? Karma is a man. Doesn't take kind of being flirted with. 
or proposed to. She is a man. But your voice, your face, your breasts. Ow. That's what you're focusing on, pervert. I worship all the aspects of a female form. But my particular favorite has always been... Oh, dear God, no. Punch him again. Punch him again. Do yourself a favor and shut up. I would never... I would have... I never would have known. But why would he do this? Don't look at me like that. I have my reasons. Is it because of your curse? Yes. I... I am undone. My heart is in pieces. You knew him for ten minutes. For those that can hear the music of their heart like I, it only takes a look to fall madly and irrever irretrievably in love. I must leave. My heart needs time to heal. Okay. The merchant attracts all sorts, doesn't it? That one is entirely Parfait's fault. Alright. Alright, nothing to see here. Back to work. I'm still in shock from what happened earlier. Karma, a man. It's not fair that he's so beautiful as a woman. If the female population of Angel knew the truth, Karma would be hunted down for making the rest of us pale in comparison. And he's being good, I suppose, prepared a special lunch to welcome the new marching boarders. We have all been invited into the private dining room. Excuse me, is Lady Parfait here? Prince Rod, perfect timing. Please join us for lunch. I only came to talk to you, Lady Parfait. But I'm hungry and I have no wish to make you wait while I eat. Come join us. Please, Your Highness. You, I've made too much as usual. You must help us finish. Eh, very well. A cursed princess and a cursed prince. What an electric collection of friends you have, Lady Parfait. I wouldn't say they were eccentric, necessarily. You're the most electric one here, Rumple. Really now? I sit silently in my chair. I'm uncomfortable around so many people. Even when Mother was alive, I had all my meals alone, since my parents were always too busy to sit down for meals with me. The meals with Ophelia and her children were always so awkward and silent. Somehow, the atmosphere here is lively and friendly, even though I barely know anyone here. Is something wrong? Excuse me? You've barely touched your food. Don't you like it? Dolores says this is one of your favorites. I'm just not used to eating with company, that's all. They say that sharing a meal brings the family closer together. Garland. I apologize. Closer together, huh? So have you made any progress on how to do those good deeds, princess? There's no way I'm admitting that I don't even know how to complete one. Or oh, I forgot, you're not so good at doing that stuff. That good stuff. You are not very helpful. Why don't you ask someone how to teach you to be good? What? <sighs> well, that's not something you hear every day. As in, take some kind of lessons? If you're having so much trouble on your own, you should ask someone to give you advice or teach you. It's as simple as that. What is this I hear? The princess needs advice? Well, then she's in luck. I happen to give the most excellent advice, and I believe, and believe me when I say I can teach almost anything. Wait, I made a joke earlier about getting down to business and if Mulan was a curse, but Karma could have Mulan's curse. Because Mulan was a girl who disguised herself as a man. So this could be a man who is turned into a woman. Uh, maybe. I don't know what other one it would be. There's no fairy tale about changing genders, except that one. Okay... The princess is indeed lucky, as I am available for teaching duties. No doubt I'd be the better choice, so don't go about deceiving the world. Excuse me? 
from one side averting to bitter enemies, and all in the span of a few hours. That man broke my heart. Anyway, I'd also be happy to help you any way I can, princess. And I'm sure your stepbrother would be happy as to help as well. I don't think I would make the best teacher for this sort of thing. I only teach others how to fight. Never mind the fact that Jurian herself still struggles to be good. What? You're lucky, aren't you? So many people are willing to help you. Why? Hmm. Why are you willing to help me? That's what we do at the margin. We help each other. Lesson number one. Doing good means helping whenever one can. Just let any of us know if you want our help. Trust no one but yourself. You need not care for anyone but yourself. This is what mothers and the last few years have taught me. I've always been alone. It's easier that way. And yet, these strangers, these people I've only known a few, a few days are willing to help me when they will gain nothing in return. Is this the goodness I was meant to see? Father? Ugh. How can I even begin to trust and care for others when I have forgotten how to do so? I am slowly beginning to understand what I must do. Were we done? Chapter 2, The Decision! Alright, we are done! Alright, I'm gonna call it there. I am not going to, uh... I'm gonna call it there. Because my throat hurts. I've been talking literally non-stop reading aloud for almost two and a half hours not to mention my two hour minecraft stream before then um so i'm tired oh man so thank you <sighs> everyone so much for watching thank you steely james for mm, hanging out and chatting and talking about um the beer club that was amazing so here we go. We got the flower one. So this one's karma. So we can date karma. We can date Rumpelstiltskin because this is the gold thread, I'm guessing. This is a seashell, so we can date our stepbrother. And... Red Riding Hood? That means, oh, and this one's Peter Pan, second star to the right. We haven't met Red Riding Hood. Who's cursed with Red Riding Hood? I don't know what the flower, I'm guessing, is Beauty and the Beast. So he's a man that's cursed to be beautiful, a woman, and a rose. This is Little Red Riding Hood's cloak, it looks like. But I don't know anyone... We haven't met anyone who's cursed along those lines. Maybe it's uh, Fritz. Maybe he becomes cursed. This is um, Walt. Because he's Peter Pan. So he's cursed to be a boy. A young child. So cursed to be a woman. Cursed somehow. Cursed to be a child. Cursed to forget himself. And this is Rumpelstiltskin's golden thread. And then cursed with no voice. But Little Mermaid, she exchanged her voice to be able to go be with the prince in the palace. So did he... Did him being cursed to be mute means that his mother was able to marry the king and they were moved into the palace and that was the exchange because he that makes sense on why he wouldn't want to break his curse why he mentioned that he didn't want to break it because of uh because of that so cool um not bad um i kind of thought there'd be voice acting so we'd be sitting here talking over their voices and my throat hurts now that I have to read it all myself, but I did an okay job. And I'm usually not that good. I'm not good at reading aloud, and I'm naturally a slower reader. So, but I think I did good this time. So, um, I'm gonna call it there, because 
don't know. That was fun. So, um, be thinking about next time who you want to date. It's not going to be Rumpelstiltskin. Not going to happen. Nope. Not ever. Nope. Nope. Not going to happen. But I'll do all the other ones. I haven't even met that one. We'll find out. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I'll see you Thursday night. I get off at 8 mountain time, so I'll be home. Uh, I'll be um, I'll be streaming around 9 to 9.30 p.m. And we might just do a little bit more of this. Not a full chapter, because it takes a while. Well, maybe a full chapter, because what I did, the introduction plus chapter 1 in 2 hours and 20 minutes. So I might be able to do another chapter on Thursday. That way, it's something... Something nice, something easy. I don't know, this is fun. It's not getting me any views or followers or anything, but it was fun. Um, so thank you everyone so much, and I'll see you Thursday night. Bye!